Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Um, have a few announcements. First of all, we've got our Holston uh, offering, our Holston Annual Conference offering, and that will go to West Knoxville. So if you would like to give to that, please put that in the memo sign of your check. And we also have uh, the Battle of the Bridge. Today's the last Sunday for that. If you want to give to that, put that in the memo of your check. And we've got the spring rummage sale coming up, and we need lots of help. And there's an insert. Terry's done really well at describing what the needs are. So we really need your help. So if you can help. And it's not just a UMW event. If you're willing and able-bodied, please come and help us because it's a, it's a good fundraiser for the church for missions, and we, we would love to have your help if you're able to do that. And that's on the, 11th, the 10th and the 11th of September. And um, I think that's, think that's all. Anything else that I've overlooked or missed? All right, I always ask that because there's a chance that I could, I could overlook something. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Oh God, you are a hiding place and shield. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Uphold us according to your promises that we may live, and we hope in your word. In Christ's name, amen. Good morning. Our opening hymn is 514. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. 514. Please stand.
to page 886 for our affirmation, the World Methodist Affirmation, Social Affirmation. Will you join me? We believe in God, creator of the world and of all people, and in Jesus Christ incarnate among us, who died and rose again in the Holy Spirit, present with us to God, strengthen and comfort. We believe God help our unbelief. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom, in the upholding of human dignity and community, in every expression of love, justice, and re reconciliation, in each art of self-giving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gifts entrusted to us that all may have enough, and in responsible use of the earth's resources. Glory, Glory to God on high and on earth peace. We confess our sins individually and collective by silence or action through the violation of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith, through the exploitation of people because of greed and indifference, through the misuse of power in personal, communal, national, and international life, through the search for security by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence, through the abuse of technology which dangers the earth and all life upon it. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. We commit ourselves individually and as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross to seek abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. be seated. Now comes a time in our worship where we share in our service in prayer. What are your joys and concerns this morning? I know All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Holy and gracious God, through the storms of life that rage, we are, you are all around us. We clothe ourselves in the full armor of the Lord. We fashion the belt of truth around our waist, and we place strength and determination as our shoes to carry us out for the mission and ministry of the world. We take up the shield of faith that defends us from flaming arrows of evil and sin. And we pray diligently at times, at all times, for one another. Help us to be strong in the Lord who provides for all of our needs. We lift up this morning all those who are battling with, with upcoming surgeries and uncertainties, disease, death, those who are on our lips and those who are, are on our hearts. Lord, forgive us for wanting a quick fix and easy answers to all of our problems. Help us to put our whole trust in you and give us an extra me measure of faith so that we may be equipped for the journey ahead. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our ushers come forward for our tithes and our offerings.
gracious and holy God, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to give. We are so blessed. We have so much. And Lord, we just pray that you would give us numerous opportunities to give to those around us in great need and those in our country and outside of our country who are in great need. And Lord, we just pray that you would take these gifts and use them for the betterment of your kingdom. In Christ's name, amen. You may be seated. And please remain seated for our hymn of preparation, which you can find on page 539. O Spirit of the Living God, we're going to sing verses 1 and 4 of 539. Joel comes this morning. May we listen for God's word in our hearts and in our lives this morning. Today's reading is from the uh, letter of Paul to the Ephesians, uh, chapter 6, 10 through 20. And in the Pew Bible, in New Testament section, page 195, where it says, The whole armor of God. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against the enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in the supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Gracious and holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
Every time I think about the full armor of God, I can't help but think about med- medieval times and the Knights of the Round Table. King Arthur and Lancelot, with all the metal armor, prepared for the fo- to fight the ultimate battles of the kingdom. But really, there's not much comparison here, is there? Today, I'm, sure, I'm not sure we truly realize how much we're fighting the battle against evil. It is in our hearts. We are made up of both good and evil because God created us good. And yet, our human nature is is good, but our human condition is prone to evil and sin. It seems that worship is something we take lightly. But we often realize how much we need to gather together in worship and actually do the, the work to keep us armed for the battles ahead. There's so much ignorance, hate, apathy, injustice, death, and destruction in the world. We saw some of that this week. We saw people fl- falling from planes, hoping to get to freedom, hoping to have a better life. We see so much oppression in the world. We see hunger and starvation, and there's plenty of food and plenty of money to go around. We all breathe the same air of the global planet Earth, and yet nations are fighting against nations. I can see why the Apostle Paul wrote this letter to the Ephesians, and and basically this letter is an extended prayer. It begins in prayer and it ends in prayer. With some theological reflections and exhortations for the church of Ephesus to keep on keeping on. To be strong in the battle ahead of them and to to know that God is with them. Often we separate ourselves from the horrors of the world and we pretend they're out there and not right here among us that they don't apply to us, and, and that we, need, we don't need any armor, that we don't need what God has to give us. We need prayer. We need to pray for each other. We need to be strong, and we need to put on the whole armor of God. When I think of Paul's surroundings, when he wrote this letter to Ephesus, it, he was imprisoned and surrounded by Roman guards with armor. These were the images in his mind as he sat in prison writing this letter to encourage the Christians. He's in chains with extreme pain and lack of nourishment to to his limbs because of those chains. He sees the Roman soldiers around him who uphold the oppressive totalitarian regime of the Roman Empire. Paul is facing death, and yet he puts on the armor of God as his strength. And he's boldly proclaiming the gospel of peace, not war, not revenge, but peace. Peace as a wretched, dirty creature in a moldy prison cell. He knows life is is a battle with evil powers, and yet he knows the victory has already been won through Jesus Christ. He knows that Jesus' life, death, and resurrection has already won the final victory. And he also knows that an armed soldier is an image of a secure soldier. That armor brings us security, it brings us hope, it brings us strength. A person full of virtue and strength. He knows that evil, hostile powers govern the world and that the only way we can survive is to put on Christ and to stand firm. It is good to know the history of the first century uh, cynic and stoic philosophers. The New Testament, the New International uh, Bible tells us that the history that they felt that anyone full of virtues Human or divine, the wise man could lose nothing. The walls that guard the wise are safe from flame and assault with no means of entrance. 
And there was a correlation between iron and virtues. Do we need battle gear today? We do, don't we? We do. Our battle gear is praying for our enemies, turning the other cheek, forgiving endlessly, staying strong in persecution, and putting on righteousness, and reading the Word of God, and having it in our hearts so that we can spew it out whenever we need to. I'll always be thankful for a fourth grade teacher in elementary school before the time of, of the separation between church and state where you didn't have to, well, it was still separation of church and state, but you still could pray, you still could sing in school. She taught us the Psalms and she played the Psalms every day after lunch. And that was such a gift. And those Psalms are in my heart they're not just something that, that I read in the Scripture, but they've become a part of who I am. So we have to have that in our hearts. We have to read and, and soak it in and, and enjoy the Word of God and what it has to offer us. To be ready for the battle against daily forces that oppose God's desire for the world. We truly need God's armor. The same armor God wears is truth and righteousness. Paul tells us to be strong in the Lord and the strength of God's power. We are to fasten the belt of truth, and it's a sign that we're prepared. When we put our belts on, we're ready to go most of the time, aren't we? We have to prepare ourselves and know the truth before we can put it on. We are to put on the breastplate of righteousness, which is a crusade against social evil and injustice that surrounds us. We need shoes for marching and for mission, not just for sitting still. We have to engage. Engage in the scripture, engage in mission, engage in ministry. And we have to be ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. This is not a battle to bring war, but a battle to bring peace. We wear the helmet of salvation that is given freely to us through Jesus Christ. And there's the shield of faith against all the enemies and flaming arrows. Arrows are metaphors for sin, and the shield was to protect the whole body. I read this week that the shield of faith, most readers envision as an individual warrior bearing that defense weapon. In ancient warfare, though, the shields were most effectively used in concert with comrades in arms to form what is called a shield wall. The slightly curved rectangular Roman shield covered the entire torso from shoulders to knees. They were to designed to interlock with the shields of the, their fellow soldiers. The Romans' highly developed shield wall strategy was known as the testudo formation. Those on the front line arranged their shields vertically, overlapping the shields, of their neighbors. The second rank held the shields over their heads, protecting not only themselves, but also the soldiers that were in front of them. This tortoise-like formation, while it was slow moving and not very nimble, was a tough defense. It protected the soldiers from from frontal assault and swords and spears and battle axes, but also from rocks and arrows railing down from heaven. As long as the shield wall held, a swift frontal assault could be turned into a grueling battle slow of slow destruction. And the Romans were most likely always on the side of winning. 
I can see why the Apostle Paul used this metaphor, the shield of faith, because faith is most effectively exercised not in isolation, but in community. We need each other in community. We need to connect with each other in Sunday school classes and, and in small groups where we become, we get to know each other and find the strength in numbers. Those are the parts of life that bring so much joy. I remember when I was at First Garland, they were telling stories of their, of their church and the history of their church. And some of those stories were simple things like some child knocked off some lady's hat in worship one morning. Back in the day where, where they wore hats. But it made me realize how much those fun stories were a part of their history, a part of each other. A part of just being together with simple everyday things that happen that, that give us strength and courage along the way. And then lastly is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We know that the Word of God is able to you that is our best defense. The cutting power of God's Word is powerful in our lives and it keeps us safe and pure. The list of armor is complete, but Paul adds one more thing. He adds prayer, the power of praying for one another. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication, Paul says. Paul knows personally the power of being immersed in the truth, righteous, salvation, Readiness to proclaim the gospel, to share our faith, and to take up the sword of God's word. And he knows that these virtues are what we need to be able to survive in life. Homiletics reminds us that if you were in the first century Christian era, there was only one thing that you definitely were afraid of more than anything else. And it was a man in iron and leather armor with a bronze helmet on his head and a short sword at his waist and a spear in his hand. This man, a Roman soldier, could walk through the hostile crowd of ordinary citizens with only robes of cloth. They would move aside, the citizens were, and make room for him. Partly because of his armor, partly because of his sharp weapons, but even more of the, that, of the authority that he stood for. The authority of the all-powerful Roman Empire. But God is more powerful. God is more powerful than any empire in this world. To the Christians, Ephesians, who were afraid of a man in armor, the apostle writes a rather extraordinary thing, telling them that they too can be equipped with armor. This armor is not made of leather or steel or bronze. It's the armor of the Spirit. I remember we had from First Broad Street some uh, some, a family from Rwanda that had survived the genocide. They had lost family members. They had traveled and didn't know what it was going to be like in the United States. They weren't told where they were going. They just said they were going to New York, and they ended up in Kingsport. They were so afraid they were ready to run once they got off the plane because they weren't told where they were going. But when they got to Kingsport, the Tri-Cities Airport, there was a sign that in, in French that said, Welcome, Manani family. So they felt a big sigh of relief. That they felt like that they were truly at a place where they could be safe again. And I think about their, their mission and their ministry and what they talked about. Not by power. They use the, the, the scripture, not by power nor by might, 
but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. From Zechariah. They were like, this is, this is our strength, this is our shield, and even though all that we've been through, the strongest thing we have is the Spirit of God. Even though the scripture was written thousands of years ago, it's still the armor that we put on today against the wiles of evil. And they're still there. They're still there in so many ways. We are to stand firm and put on the protection that we need. To fight for truth and righteousness and justice and peace. God's armor is still ours for the taking. God's armor is still ours, and, and we can still be knights. Ready. Ready for the battle. For the reign of God. In the name of the Father. And the Son. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending forth hymn today is 670, Go Forth for God. We're going to sing verses 1 and 4 of 670. Please stand. Receive this benediction, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.